I'm Rachel Landry. I'm a sophomore representative on Honors Leadership Board, and I am introducing Professor Thomas Schutenhelm, who is talking about interpretation and imagination, how to use critical thinking to develop a creative identity. Thank you. To help contextualize this a little bit, um, I'm a musician, so I'm a performer and a composer. And when I heard my colleague George Springlemeyer was going to play a bit of music, I thought I'd compose a little bit of prose um, to demonstrate maybe how we get from uh, uh, the idea of music to the performance of it. So while uh, Professor Kaplan was talking about Ciceronian, I've adopted my very best Emersonian uh, tone for you. So in his essay, The Critic as Artist, Oscar Wilde invents the characters Gilbert and Ernest to reconcile critical inquiry against artistic creation. Gilbert explains, quote, artistic creation implies the working of the critical faculty, and indeed without, it cannot be said to exist at all. So criticism is really creative in the highest sense of the word. Criticism is, in fact, both creative and independent, unquote. I take this to mean that to create is simultaneously to engage in a critique of oneself, and a critique of the conventions we are born into, and to seek an independence from it. There is no recipe to achieve this. It must be, as we would expect it to be, created. Only a few will succeed, and wit uh, forgive me, only a few will succeed, and the witnesses to these successes will be even fewer. But for the ones who can count themselves among those who have made the attempt, there will be some satisfaction. If, through our own desire, or perhaps the provocation of others, we enter the commonwealth of the imagination, the splendor of this experience is not easily forgotten, even if our stay is all too brief. Either we enter back into the pack, or, on rare occasions, summon that courage to cross the threshold, we might find ourselves able to surrender to that most basic instinct to create or reach an even higher plane and create authentically. But if we suffer anxieties along this journey, and I suffer them most profoundly, I remind myself of Beckett's lines, fail more, fail better. I get no inspiration from this, uh, but I do find the courage to begin this journey again, if only to fail again. I have tried and often failed to recreate this commonwealth of the imagination, for others. For some, it's the classroom. But this is an illusion, because, it, because I can lead others to it, but only temporarily. But give them the techniques of critique, they might find their way back. And I will ha have felt some of that success. If not, I promise to fail more and fail better next time. While I have led others to it, I know we cannot enter together into this, into this uh, uh, commonwealth, because it is necessarily a solitary place. And for this, I go back to Wilde, and he says, it seems to me that the imagination spreads, or should spread, a, soli a solitude around it, and works best in silence and isolation." Unquote. We can retreat together, as we so often do, but on some occasions, we can perpetuate our stay, or on rarer occasions, find the courage to cross that threshold to true creativity. We will not enter again in the same manner, and certainly not as the same person. For creation is a permanent separation. In his famous essay, The Creative Act, Marcel Duchamp discusses the struggle between intention and realization. Duchamp writes, and I quote, the chain of reactions accompanying the creative act, there is a link missing. This gap, representing the inability of the artist to express fully his intention, this difference between what he intended to realize and did realize, is the personal art coefficient. He goes on to explain how the personal art coefficient is like an arithmetical relation between the unexpressed but intended and the unintentionally expressed. And I can't think of a better or more poetic way to express the frustrations and aspirations of our own age. Yet I always seek to fill that gap, 
to find that link to complete that chain. I know in this activity of critique and contemplation, I will find that answer. And from this will follow naturally that urge to create, and the cycle begins again. For I am only made aware of this absence through, I am only made aware of this absence through the activity of critique, and my desire to fill it with a presence necessitates a creation. And I go back to Wild and quote, there have been critical ages that have not been creative, but there has never been a creative age that has not been critical also, for it is the critical faculty that invents fresh forms. So for the students who have not yet read Wilde, Beckett, or even seen Duchamp, I urge you to read them now and read them closely, to submit to them and submit them to critical inquiry and to experiment with their seemingly irrationalities. And if those artists can't persuade you, then I'm going to collapse into Roald Dahl in the great words of Willy Wonka, we are the music makers, we are the dreamers of dreams. Thank you. <laughs>